<laughs> hey, what's up, guys? It's time for another General Hospital review. And I just got done um, about an hour, a little over an hour ago. I got done watching Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday's episode. So, they're a little more fresher in my brain. But I will start with um, my Santa. <laughs> awesome scenes this week with Valentine popping back up. I didn't think we'd see him for a while, but we did see him on Monday and Tuesday's episode. He was... I don't know if they ever said why him and Charlotte were in the church, but they were in the church. And there was a guard watching them, of course. And Valentin gets a phone call from Felicia. He answers for Felicia. <laughs> Last week, um, they were, yeah, they were, you know, Ned, Drew, and uh, Michael were fighting because they had and nobody's heard from Valentin. But he answered for Felicia. <laughs> I think that's funny. Anyway, <laughs> she tells him about Anna getting arrested for, um, Lucy going missing and Valentin freaks out <clears throat> and he wants to hurt and come back you know be there for Anna and Felicia said it's best that you keep doing what you're doing stay there you know make Victor think that you know his plan is working and so Valentin agrees that's what's best so <clears throat> but he still wants to get Charlotte the fuck out of the place and so he sends her away, and um, he then gets in a fight with the guard. <laughs> like a real fight. A hardcore fight. And it looks like the guard is winning. And then, bam! He gets hit over the head with the candlestick holder. <laughs> and it's an un and it turns out to be Laura! It's Laura! I miss, girl, we've been missing you. You've been needed so hell of a lot. Thank you for coming back. <laughs> for a second, I thought that it was going to turn out to be Jocelyn. And it's like, because they aged her. She's m much taller than last time I remember her. But now I think about it, it might be the same actress. I don't know. It's been so long since we've seen her. But it's Laura coming back. <laughs> and um, I wrote, did I write down her quote? I think I wrote down her quote. Oh, yeah, she did. <clears throat> she said, God didn't send me. Your girlfriend did. I'm like, Laura called Anna Valentine's girlfriend. Oh, that's so cute. <sighs> I, I, I will never get tired of hearing that. <sighs> Beautiful. Okay, back to the review. <laughs> Yeah, you talk about what's going on. Like Victor said, you know, Felicia filled him in on what's going on. And so they're like, oh, let's get Charlotte and get the hell out of here. <laughs> but yeah, Laura thought that um, Anna thought that he would need some backup. I'm like, cute. I'm not crying, you're crying. Anyway, so they try to leave and another guard pops up. Yeah. <clears throat> and he was, you know, um, Laura, she puts back on her whatever you call that nun hair thingy. <laughs> it's funny. She had it like all up on her neck. <laughs> it was like really trying to cover up everything. <laughs> and then the guard, he, um, I was about to say Anna. Laura is pretending that she was Sister Margaret because he's like, I don't think I ever saw you around. She's like, oh, she's just visiting. And then it looks like they're going to get away with it. But then they heard the guard, heard the other guard moaning. And Laura's like, oh, yeah, we saw him um, getting drunk off of the communion, communion wine. <laughs> and then he's like, he only drinks vodka. <laughs> Pulls out the gun. <laughs> and I'm <laughs> laughing too hard at this. Like, and she was like, oh, you shouldn't use, I forgot exactly what she said, but basically you shouldn't pull a gun out in the Lord's house. And I'm like, she found Jesus with um, her brother inside her. 
Lordy, and um, looks like they're goners, and then the bell rings, and it distracts him, and then he gets knocked the fuck out. <laughs> and by Kevin, Kevin Collins, Dr. Kevin Collins in the house. And I'm like, yeah, they just, <laughs> and I called the whole team. <laughs> I was waiting for somebody else to pop up, but no, it's just us two. Kevin ended up ringing the bell. He was um, keeping the motor going, apparently. <laughs> but, you know, he was getting worried because, you know, they hadn't um, come out yet. So he used his best judgment and decided to ring the bell. He's like, eh, it's either a way to help or a way to get, you know, the message out that it's time to get the fuck out of there. So. I love this team. Definitely really cool. So, where are they? That's all we saw of them this week. So, I'm like, are they going back to Port Charles? Or are they going into hiding? But we know that Valentine is going to not be around for a while. Because he's filming his other show for the Disney Channel. Which I need to catch up on. Because I miss a lot of episodes. Because I'd be out Friday night and be forgetting to watch it later. But I got Disney Plus now, so I can <laughs> add it to my list of stuff to binge watch. But anyways, Anna goes into her arraignment with her hair looking hella nice. It was so beautiful. It had little curls at the end. Oh, it just looked gorgeous. It's like she just walked out of a salon. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> I'm like, did Felicia hook her up before? <laughs> she, she brought the cur curler nine. <laughs> the make the makeup kit. <laughs> That's the kind of friend you need to come down to you while you're locked up and hook you up. <laughs> <laughs> oh Lord. But before the arraignment, Jordan was like um, you think Scotty's a good lawyer? And she's like, yeah, he knows that I'm innocent. I was like, Jordan, go the fuck somewhere. Ain't nobody worried about your ass. And <laughs> talk more about Jordan later. She was on. Jordan was on a lot this week. <clears throat> Anyways, um, of course that damn, <laughs> I took notes calling her ADA bitch. <laughs> Don't ask me what her name is. I don't be keeping up with people's names because, you know, she ain't important. Anyway, she wanted bail to be denied. Um, um, and Scotty, he filed a motion um, to dismiss the charges because they know that the evidence is, you know, was planted and don't have enough to go on with what's going on, basically. I mean, they never even found Lucy, so, you know, for all you know, she's chilling on an island somewhere. <laughs> but ADA bitch is like, oh, she works for the WSB, she probably has a lot. Oh, yeah, because Sky said that she'll, um, she's not gonna go anywhere, she'll surrender her passport. And ADA bitch is like, she works for the WSB, she probably has multiple. And that judge denied her bail and sent her back to lockup. I'm like, are you fucking serious? Really? Really? <sighs> but yeah, she went back to lock up, ADA bitch. And of course, Victor loves what's going on, and he gets a phone call about it, and he says that he will, um, he will donate a generous amount to ADA bitch if she ever wants to um, run for a higher office. You know that? I think about it. Was he talking about the ADA bitch or the, um, yeah, I think he was talking about the ADA bitch. But, <clears throat> yeah, but he um, was getting information from Holly. Um, I, I just knew that that bitch was up to something as soon as she popped up. Yeah, she muted Robert's phone so he didn't know about what's going on with Anna. And then he finds out that um, 
Robert is trying to find another judge to hear Anna's case and to get her released. And so, of course, Holly had to tell somebody about that on the phone. And, of course, a lot of us were thinking, Victor. And, of course, it was revealed. You know what? I didn't write what, what date was it. That was Thursday's episode. When they met at the footbridge. Yep. Worked on Victor. People are like, oh, she's probably being blackmailed. And yeah, she's being blackmailed. She was locked up for two years. Still don't know why the, Why did he lock her up? I don't know. If I'm trying to figure out if I really care. I mean, I like Victor, but I never liked Holly. But anyway, she's saying that... um. <clears throat> you know, she doesn't, you know, spy on her friends, should be locked up again for whatever reason. And then it sounded like they were hinting that um somebody else was locked up with them. So of course I immediately thought eat them, but then I'm like Don't 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 make it be Luke. <clears throat> but it sounds like he got um somebody else locked up somewhere. Either way, I don't give a fuck who that person is, so. Because I don't like really Ethan or Luke, so. They can uh, stay wherever the fuck they are, for all I care. <laughs> but Finn ended up visiting Anna up in lockup. <laughs> Lord, Anna, I talk about Violet. She wants to come over for another tea party, but um, Anna's like, um, I'm locked up, they won't let me out. <laughs> if you know where I saw him by Akon, his first single. <laughs> Lordy. <clears throat> and um, Finn asked where Valentine was, and she said that he's handling something. And Finn's like, something more important than you? And I'm like, Finn, if you don't shut the motherfucker up about Valentine, he is not. You. you you don't need to be worried about what Valentine is handling, okay? You just need to go somewhere because I'm way beyond tired of your ass. And you're going to talk shit about my boy Valentine, then you definitely are going to get talked about by me. <laughs> Hard threat, but... <laughs> yeah, they ended up talking about Liz and... And I said that I, I would I stopped paying attention after that. But um, and I said she has faith that she's gonna be let out and cleared. And um, Vin said that he has faith that she'll be released. And she says um, she hopes so too. And that the features on shore. But I know that Anna and Valentine better be in that future, or we're gonna have some problems. I'm just saying. <clears throat> but I digress. <laughs> and I was going to talk about my Sprina. But since we mentioned Liz, we might as well talk about Liz and this horrible ass storyline of hers that I swear has been going on for five years now. <laughs> it just seems like it's just uh, dragged on for way too fucking long. But as we saw at the end of last Friday's episode is, um, well, on Friday's episode, she broke into her parents' house. And at the end, her daddy, Jeff, came home. And you know what? I meant to look up what her mom's name was. Because I don't know if they said it and I missed it or they never said what her name was. But anyways, because I read the article about them hiring actors play her um, parents, but they made a big deal about the dad because he played on some other stuff, and then, like, oh, two little lines, oh, and this actress is playing her mom. I, I don't know, something makes me think her name is Carolyn. I don't know. If you know what her name is, let me know, please, so I can stop calling her Liz's mom. 
But anyways, her mom pops up too, and she's like, oh, Elizabeth, and she goes and hugs her, and Liz got this, oh my god, this bitch do not look the fuck go. <laughs> look at her face. That's one good thing that Rebecca Herbst does. She, she does the bitch, bitch face <laughs> in daytime, definitely, for me anyways. She talks a lot with her face. She don't have to say a lot of words to know what how Liz feels. <sighs> but anyways, <clears throat> she lays into them, of course, for giving her up. And she's like, well, he's, they were talking about, oh, they went around and helped all these people. She's like, yeah, and all those people weren't related to you. They're not your kids. So, kind of feels like you care about strangers and not your own children. Yeah. As I did pretty fucked up too. <laughs> oh, Lordy. And she mentions that they weren't there for her when she needed them. You know, when she had her kids. Um, of course, she didn't mention when her first baby daddy died and she was left with one kid by herself. <laughs> but, you know, she brought up. Um, she wasn't there. They weren't there for when her kids were born. When Frankel died. When she was raped on Valentine's Day. I'm like, mm. yeah, that's pretty shitty. And then she wonders why they reach out to her kids now. You know, they she they've been talking to them through um, <clears throat> social media and never reached out to her. So I'm like, that's extremely fucked up. I'm just saying, <laughs> yeah, that pretty should have been. Anyway, Liz decides to leave them. She's like, motherfuck y'all. And then she comes back. She's like, no, that's what you want me to do. But I'm not. And then she brings up her mem First of all, before I go any further, it just popped in my head. Where did Terry go? <laughs> did she not catch on? Well, she knows that the, the parents left the um, restaurant. But did she catch on that they might be at the house and that she should probably show up? To mediate things between her and Liz, Dumb and Liz, but I don't know. <laughs> or she just goes back home because <laughs> Willow got a phone call, and on the ID it said Dr. Terry Randolph, and Britt was out with um, Scotty Liesel and um, Chuck Nuts. So <laughs> I don't know. Anyways, a uh, that. A random moment. But anyway, she brings up her memory about um, being, they said that I heard Marinara Islands, but I don't know if that's the exact name, and I'm just thinking about spaghetti. So, I don't know, but she brought up about having a fight with Finn's wife, Rico. Is that her name, or did I... Uh, see, I suck with names. It's, I heard Rico, so... Anyways, that's just a weird name for a woman. Anyways. <laughs> she said she had a memory about her talk fighting with her, and then she ends up at the bottom of the stairs. And mom asks, like, are you sure that's a memory, or sh uh, she's just making it up? And I'm like, are you fucking serious, bitch? <laughs> Let's ask why they decided to reach out to her boys. Oh, I already talked about that. <clears throat> yeah, I put Mrs. Finn. <laughs> now I know her name is Rico. I, I assume her name is Rico. Um, what should I take? Oh, her dad had um said, no, I'm going to take a walk and talk about it. And Liz is like, no, we can talk about this in front of mom. And she asked if he had an affair with Rico. And he said, yeah, he did. And um, I was like, oh, I should have took that walk with him. <laughs> and then the mom and Miss said she already knew about it. <laughs> like, mm, you knew about it? And you stuck by him? Mm, that's, that's, that's love. Definitely. <laughs> Well, she did. Vile say to death do us part. And um, for better or worse. So she stuck by the mirror vows. That's good for her. Not many people do that these days. 
<laughs> Liz asked why they couldn't. Oh. He come saying that they had an affair. Mom knew about it. They asked what was her memory. Oh, I, I jumped the gun. They didn't know about the memory before they talked about this. But then after the memory, uh, um, she said that she sees them at the top of the stairs and then she was down the stairs. And she asked that um, if either of them pushed them down the stairs and Jeff said he did. And the mom's like, no, it's time for her to know the truth. And um, that agrees. And you should be the one to tell her that she's the one that pushed Rico down the stairs. Or, you know, they fought with her. and she, That's how she ended up the bottom of the stairs. And they're making it seem like it's like a big deal. Like, like it's supposed to be something surprising that Liz did that. And I'm like, um... I just thought that it was obvious from the get-go that Liz had something to do. The, Liz was the reason why she fell downstairs, whether they are fighting or she really pushed her down the stairs. So, surprising would be, well, surprising would be if she really did throw her down the stairs. Because <laughs> I know Liz has done some shit, but a murder or possible murder, I don't see her doing that. But, um... <clears throat> But yeah, if it was somebody else that stepped in or something, that would have been surprising. Like Finn, <laughs> Finn popped up and it's like, bitch, you cheated on me. <laughs> now that would be something that would be shocking to me. <sighs> but anyway, so I guess Liz just blinked it all out and her parents just didn't want her to uh, remember and she just thought that it was weird that her mom would gaslight her daughter to protect a man. <laughs> I'm like, oh lordy, this <laughs> you asked Liz and you got your answer. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> Jeff said that he knew that it happened and um, got real help and. Um, yeah, and they didn't want to get into the justice system there, and so they put in for a transfer. And said of Rico, she had she a concussion and internal bleeding. She needed a blood transfusion, and that's how she contracted the disease that killed her. Like, <sighs> So well, yeah, Liz is like, oh shit, I killed her. <laughs> it's like, oh no, you didn't. It was an accident. And I'm like, oof, Finn Magana. Wonder what Finn's. Ugh, I hate to say it, but I wonder how Finn is going to react to it. And a lot of Liz fans are mad because here we are thinking she's finally going to get a storyline. But here it is something that's a made up memory. I made up something that happened before she was on the show, and then now it's revolving around Finn. And it's just. I think it. I don't know what to think about this storyline. It's good that Liz is. I don't want to complain because then the writers are going to be like, oh, you want Liz, and here we give you Liz, and now you're complaining about what you get. <laughs> I'm glad that she's has a storyline, but then yeah. Then again, this is a big storyline that's more intertwined with more Finn than Liz as it's been from the start. <clears throat> and after all these years that fans wanted um, Liz's parents to come back, and then this is how you bring them back. <sighs> <clears throat> I don't know. The whole storyline is very... I don't know. It's not over yet. So we'll see how well this goes down. <laughs> we shall see how that goes down. 
I'll just keep it at that. <laughs> Lordy. Well, on to the next vlog. <clears throat> First before I uh, still I'm gonna talk about spring now. But you know, there's other stuff that led to that. But um <clears throat> anyways, so this part was funny. For Halloween, Donna was a pumpkin and Avery. I forgot what Avery was. <laughs> oh. But they're at the pumpkin patch with Sunny and Nina. They were all really happy to be with Nina. I was like, oh, they're so cute. So adorable. They love her. And it's funny. Carla was talking to Sam. <laughs> and she looks over and she sees how happy Donna and Avery are around Nina. And gets all upset. <laughs> and I'm just like laughing. I'm like... Excellent. <laughs> <clears throat> she goes over to talk to them, and Avery and Donna are happy to see her. And Avery acting just like her mama. No, it's like she knew that if she talked about having fun with Nina, that Carly would be upset. <laughs> so her mother, but she told her that they had a pajama party, and um, Nina's at um, you know, Carly's. So Sunny, I need to talk to you. <laughs> so they go and talk, and Carly's like, "I told you that I didn't want um, Donna. That she didn't want Nina to spend the night when Donna was over there." And Sunny so was like, um, "Well, Nina didn't spend the night there." And she's like, well, "What was up with the pajama party?" <laughs> I'm like, damn. Like, no, there's just pajamas and they ate pizza and watched movies and then Nina left. And then uh, Carly thanks him for respecting her boundaries. And so it's like, motherfuck your boundaries. I'm tired of them. <laughs> and, uh, you know, he's like, Nina, him and Nina are together. <clears throat> and she's going to spend the night when she wants to and spend time with the kids. Um, when he feels he wants her to do it. And Carla's just like... Uh. <laughs> and she walks off and he tells Nina what he said to Carly. And Nina's like, oh, you're so sweet, honey. Thank you for standing up to your ex-wife. I love you. And kisses him. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't talk like that. You know how to add stuff in there. But anyways, like Sam was asking Carly about her about her trip and she knew that Drew had went down there. And Carly was talking about her trip and of course left out Drew and Sam noticed and she's like, um, but what really happened with you and Drew? And um it seems like Carly was about to say it. She's like, mm, it's Time that you knew. And then Drew popped up. <laughs> I totally forgot what he said. He's like, um, he should be the one that tells her. And he said something. I, I, I forgot. You know, that's bad because I was watching it on the app, so I could have rewound it. But by the time I realized he didn't say, I don't remember what he said. I was writing on a note. And I didn't remember what he said. I'm like, I'm like almost done with this episode. I don't feel like trying to rewind it. But anyways, <clears throat> he sits Carly down and he explains to her, you know, why nobody can know that they're together. So what Ned was talking about last week about yeah, that was last week. I was like, wait, was that this week? No, that was last week. Yeah, he said that um, Ned brought up the insider trading um, for, you know, him telling her about possible merger and her investing in Aurora and that's how she left her half lost her half of the metro court. And um I put in parentheses, forgot what he said. And so he apologizes to her for getting her into this and she's like, Oh, it's not your fault. You didn't want to tell me and I invested it anyways. Um and I'm like, Carly taking 
uh, you know, admitting her fault. Go <laughs> for you, girl. It's like she did change a little in Jacksonville, but she's still keeping a secret that Willow is Nina's daughter. So she's not, she's not 100% there. <laughs> oh, Lordy. <laughs> but it's funny, before that, um, oh, before I forget, Sam asked Spinelli to help him look into truck nuts a little more. Mm -hmm. You know, especially now that, you know, respects that he's Mac's son, which I don't, I hope that's not true. Mac deserves so much better than that. I'm just saying, Mac Daddy. Whew, that man is so beautiful. <laughs> it was funny that um Rob on Friday's episode yesterday's episode, <laughs> Robert finds out. I thought he already knew that Mac thought that Chuck Nuts was his son and that they were doing a DNA test, but apparently Robert did not. And um when Mac was telling him <laughs> he's the Mac Mac on the back of the head. <laughs> he's like, Oh, what is that for? And I'm like brother. It's so cute. <laughs> I love them. They're so cool. I want more Robert and Maxine. Please. Thank you. The Scorpio bros should share more scenes. I, I, I right? I'm sure people can back Some people will back me up on that. But <clears throat> anyways, so the before Drew interrupted Sam and Carly's conversation, he went to go see um that that's why I found out that nobody can find out that they're together because he talked to Alexis. <laughs> he took Scout to go see Alexis. Um, she was a monarch butterfly. She was cute, adorable, and I was like, "Oh, he's just doing nice, letting his daughter see his grandma, see her, see her grandma." But no, he was just there to get legal advice. Free legal advice from Alexis, and they were talking in hypotheticals because, you know, there's no um, client um, confidentiality. <laughs> oh, by the way, why does Scout like candy corn? Oh, girl. I blame Drew. Drew and his Drew side of the family for that blunder. Cassidines don't eat candy corn. <laughs> Anyways, but yeah. <clears throat> she said that ins that, that was insider trading. And she said that if the two parties are family or in a romantic relationship, then it would be easier to um, prove insider trading. <sighs> and they leave, and then Alexis gets a letter, she opens it up. And she's surprised. Dun, dun, dun. That's the two. So that goes into Wednesday's episode. And at the letter is from the hooker. Mm -hmm. Typed up. <laughs> Find out later that it looks like it was typed up by an old typewriter. And that's what Jordan said. And I'm like, old school. I like it. I like it. <laughs> but we saw part of the letter, and then Dante read it later. But um, for what I saw, it said that they um, she asked, um, wanted to know, are, are you if Alexis was just being curious, or oh, she wanted to be next, or just want to be curious? And I said they're not um, after fame. That's all I can see. And then she called Jordan, and Jim Jordan and Dante showed up. And Dante reads the letter, says, also says, they're not a deranged lunatic that's attacking people at random. The ones who wronged me will feel my wrath. <clears throat> Just like I thought, the, the hooker is after people connected to Trina and her trial. So... So Jordan figures that out and Alexis wants to print the letter out into the paper and Jordan says, no, you've done enough already, <laughs> basically. And of course she leaves and 
Alexis calls somebody. Ends up being Gregory. He comes and she tells him about the letter. And then she shows it to Gregory. And um, she made a copy of it. Jordan took the original and Alexis made a copy before he got there. And I'm like, of course. <sighs> Lordy. Alexis. <laughs> Ugh, I just don't want this to be a setup for Alexis to get it. Or I'm okay with Gregory getting it. But don't kill him, my girl. Alexis, no. Can't lose that. No. But be interesting. I'm glad that they started. Because you know, they you know, hadn't really talked about it. They didn't have to talk about the hooker. Has it been two weeks? Or been almost two weeks since we last heard about the hooker. So it's good that they're revisiting that storyline. <laughs> but anyways, more information before that. But before, more information on that. But before, talk about my screen now. No Spencer this week, but Trina and Josh were talking about them. Because you know Trina's got a bag when you're all alone and you hang up. And you, uh, anyway, <laughs> I'm no usher. Anyway, Josh was, they were gossiping about the men in their lives. And Josh, you know, told her about the, her and Cameron sleeping together again. And she thought that that would bring them closer. But it just seems to just drive them further apart. I mean, she feels it, but, you know, Cameron doesn't. Well, you know, he worried about it since they never had sex. But, you know, now Cameron's on cloud nine. And, you know, Josh is not using her words to let him know. <sighs> Bad for Cameron. Oh, poor dude. Anyways, so Trina's like, don't let what Esme did to y'all, you know, cause problems. And Josh's like, you know, it's not just what Esme did. It's, um, they kept secrets from each other. You know, Cameron didn't tell her that him and Spencer were working together to find out info on Esme to clear Trina. And then Jocelyn didn't tell Cameron that she's, um, safe. Dex, Michael, did. <clears throat> so, there. Oh, yeah. Then she changes the subject <laughs> and goes on Trina. And, um, yeah, we only saw that one scene with her, that one episode with her and Rory at their convention. <laughs> but, um, that's what happened with her and Rory. You know, she told her about. The, the hotel room messing up. The hotel messing up and giving them one bed. And so they had to get a car. But they're on the bed kissing. And then they stopped. So I was like, y'all stop? And I was like, yeah. Because she started saying, thinking about Spencer. And she's like, oh, you know, it's just, um, you know, Victor had asked her to... Um, ask her to visit, ask her, what? Victor asked her to visit Spencer and just like, uh, no, it's because you still care about him or you still want him. What did she say? Oh, because, oh, she says what her. Oh, where did, oh, she saw his feelings for him. I'm not trying to think of the word she said. She said feelings. <laughs> oh, I forgot. Trina and I got... We didn't get to see what Trina got um, Avery and Donna. I'm mad. I want to see it. But the bag was cute. But anyways, Joss said that, you know, her and Cameron went to go see Spencer. And he couldn't stop talking about her. And she was like, oh, well, that's the reason why he called me. Joss, like, he called you? What? What's that about? She's like, oh, my phone's on the don't disturb, so I don't know what he, you know, said. She just um, saw the caller ID when she woke up the next morning. She never called him. Um, so I'm wondering, was this going to lead her to actually go and see Spencer? Because we need that in our lives. Please. I missed them together. It was the time for Spencer to get out of prison. Wasn't it supposed to be just one month? Or was it three months? You know, see, <laughs> not paying attention. <laughs> Anyways, Jordan, um, oh, jo well, Josh said she doesn't think that Spencer deserves her. I'm like, Josh, go the fuck away. We ain't got time for you. 
Anyways, but Jordan shows up to talk to them about um, the letter. And she says that um, she think, she tells Josh that she thinks that she was the intended target. Oh, Carly. Carly comes home um, at the same time. Well, right after Jordan shows up. And she tells them that she thinks Josh was the intended target, not Brando, because... You know, she was in the alley, and then Brando showed up. Like I've been saying, because, you know, it looked like the, kill the hooker was going after her, and then they heard Brando, and it's like, uh, why attack Jocelyn when Brando can take you on and stop the attack when you can just go after Brando and, you know, find um, Jocelyn later? And so Jocelyn's like, what? And Trina's like, <gasps> she realizes that that means... Everybody that got attacked is connected to me. And of course, she freaks out. And she's like, I'm the reason why everybody's dead. And they're like, no, 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 they're not. And um, they, she really thinks that it's Esme. Because Esme makes the most sense, of course. But, you know, she, well, I don't think it's Esme. But, you know, she's technically not cleared yet. Because the letter was dated two weeks ago. And she's been locked up. Well, in our time, it's been two weeks, but yeah, we didn't see her this week. <clears throat> or Nicholas. So maybe next week. Or Ava. That hurts. But, you know, Jordan's like, we can't just focus on one suspect right now. You know, because it's too early. You know, you know. Need more evidence, but at least they're finally on the right track after saying this from the beginning. Honestly, but um, this um, she tells them it's not safe for them to stay on campus. You know, they still go to classes, but you know, move back home. So of course, <clears throat> and so Jordan, you know, takes Trina home and sure she gets home okay. And Jocelyn. She freaks out and immediately thinks of Cameron. And so um, she's like, oh, Cameron, you know, if you know, she's a target, then so is Cameron, of course. And so she calls him. He doesn't answer. He's at the footbridge. Um, he hears the sound. It's like, the better not be the damn hooker. And there's Drew. I'm like, I never thought I'd be happy to see Drew, but here he is. <laughs> and they're talking about Oscar. What is all this talk about Oscar? I mean, I guess it's good to remember they're dead, but ugh, if you didn't watch my um, reviews back when Oscar was alive, I hate that motherfucker. Anyways, he was just so annoying. Anyways, <laughs> anyways, Carly, you know, was just like, okay, calm down. You're not going any fucking where. I'm gonna call Drew, your future stepdaddy, and <laughs> tell him to go see Cameron. <laughs> Of course, she didn't say that, but, you know, I like to put words in people's mouths. <laughs> so, she calls um, Drew and said, you know, word about Cameron. He's not answering his phone. And Drew's like, he's with Cameron. And so, Jocelyn sneaks out during this time. <laughs> of course, Carly doesn't know. Teenagers. <laughs> and she goes to the... Um, Kelly's and Dex is outside. He's um, guarding Sunny and Nina who are inside drinking vanilla shakes. Being so cute. They're so adorable. I love all these cute moments we got with them this week. But uh, before I talk about Dex and Chas, I thought it was funny. <laughs> he was like, can't Dex um, guard us inside? It's cold out there. And Sunny's like, Cold um, keeps them sharp. <laughs> and did I? That's not what he said. Oh, keeps them alert. That's what it was. See, I had the quote right on Twitter, and then I was like, the cold keeps them alert. And I'm like, Sunny is so mean to Dex, but it's fine. It's funny to me. And Dex is playing him because of Michael. So, anyway, so. Of course, Jocelyn gets mad at him for still wanting to work with Sonny. And then Cameron walks up and is like, uh, the fuck y'all doing? Basically. <laughs> but Josh filled, her in, filled him in about him possibly being uh, a victim of the hooker because they're targeting people close to 
um, Trina. Dex says that Sunny needs to know about that, and Josh is like, uh, no. But they ended up going in anyways and talking to Sunny, and Sunny brings Jocelyn home. <laughs> and Drew had arrived um, a little before Sunny did, and um, Carter's like, you said that we can't be together, so why are you at my house? And he's like, the longer I stay out here, the more likely someone's gonna catch me. <laughs> so, and <laughs> he walks in. First of all, I know, another tangent, but I'm just thinking, people know that they're friends. I mean, they don't know that they're together as a couple, but they know they're friends. And Drew and Michael are working together on the merger. So, them sneaking around is, it's kind of hot. Uh, one, I don't know if I can ship them yet, but of course I love secrets. The secret couples, that's pretty interesting. But Michael is her son, so they could just prove that she found out from Michael, which kind of technically she did. I mean, Drew, I believe she overheard Drew say it, but he was talking to Michael, so there's a connection there, and everybody knows that they've been attached to the hip since Drew come back, so Ned could easily put that together, but anyways, so Carla's Drew in, and she's looking for Josh. She's not there. And she's like, oh, we went to Kelly's. And Drew's like, oh, you would do the same thing. Carla's like, oh, but Josh is supposed to be smarter than me. I'm like, no, her ass is just like you. And they're about to leave, and then they open the door, and Josh is standing there with Sunny. And Carla thanks him for bringing her home. And Sunny leaves, and then um, Carla's like, oh, you should leave with um, Sunny. So it doesn't look weird. <laughs> Okay. And he's like, okay, but I have to say one more thing. And then he kisses Carly. And I'm like, um, Drew, that's not words. That's a kiss. And he leaves, and Jocelyn's standing there. She's like, um, what was that? <laughs> she didn't say anything. She was just standing. Carly didn't know she was standing there, so I guess. Oh, it'll be interesting Monday. So, Mom, you're kissing <laughs> Uncle Drew. Yeah, but oh lordy. Yeah, um, Jordan took Trina home and was filming them in her. Um, Jordan and Jordan. Jordan was filling Portia and Curtis in on what's going on. Um, Portia and Curtis were talking about their wedding. Not about picking a place, and they got a call about um. Olivia called about space being available at the Metro Court. And they're like, Chris, like, thought that was booked through 2024. And I'm like, damn, Metro Court is getting that much attention. <laughs> but, but there was a cancellation and it's going to be on Valentine's Day. And they made a big deal about, they kept making it a big deal about it being under six months. I was like, I guess six months is time for you to plan a wedding? I don't know. Well, I, I believe I said it in other reviews about my wedding. It was just on the beach. No real plans. Just on the beach. <laughs> we just walked out to the beach, picked a spot, and had the wedding. You know, I didn't go into spending a lot of money or, or on a dress. It's just a random dress I got from a store. Summer dress that I got from the store a few years before. I never wore it. I haven't worn it since either, but I still have it. Maybe next summer. But anyway, Jordan told them in on what's going on and think that the um, Jocelyn was the hookers attended Target, not Brando, and that all the um, hookers. Um, Victims which are tied to Trina, and they think that Joss and Trina are in danger. And Portia acted surprised, which I'm very confused because Portia is the one that went to Jordan a few weeks ago and told Jordan about the connection, possibly with Trina, being with Trina, but then she wasn't sure about Brando, and then Jordan was talking about Jocelyn being in the alley, and she poss possibly was going to be the attendant target, not Brando. 
I thought they already established that a few weeks ago. I remember that scene. I'm like, if I remember it, then that's bad. So, I don't know, was Portia acting surprised about it for Trina's sake? Or was she acting surprised because she was right? I don't know. And, you know, because now the evidence is pointing to her theory being right. Maybe that was the reason? I don't know. But they're like, yeah, Trina is staying here. Oh, Curtis was talking about having six kids. He's crazy. <laughs> Portia, um, of course, said he was going to call Tagger. And um, cause Jordan needs her dad. And Jordan. Trina needs her father. And of course, he walks away, and Jordan has to bring up, you know, you need to tell Curtis about Trina. And everything. And Portia's like, oh, she needs some time to get the, um, the genetics testing. Um, done. And Jordan's like, oh, this shit about to be 19. You've had almost two decades to figure this out. <laughs> and of course, Curtis doesn't hear this conversation when it comes back down. And so, Tiger is going to be there. And he's even said that possibly rejoining the um, PCPD to figure out what's going on. So I'm like, is this something we're actually going to see or is it something that they're just saying just because? I don't know. <clears throat> but that's all I wanted to talk about this week. I don't really care about the Austin and um, Maxi stuff. Well, actually, Austin wants Benelli to match him in Ma did I say that right? Austin, Austin wants Benelli to match him and Maxie together. I guess to see if they're a good fit or something. I don't know. But when it, they need to just put Spinelli and Maxie back together because Maxie and Austin are just very blah. Sorry. Nobody else is feeling it. Most people that I've talked to or seen tweets from think that Brit and Austin either get rid of Austin altogether or try him with Brit because there's some chemistry there. Get rid of Trump nuts altogether. <laughs> like I agree with you. But yeah, that's pretty much all that happened. Yeah, that's yeah, that's all that happened this week. I told you Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday are still in my brain. I literally just watched them a few hours ago. But oh shit. Fifty two minutes? Why are you all telling me to shut the fuck up? Anyway, <laughs> Thank you for watching. If you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe. Why not? And let me know what you have enjoyed and didn't enjoy this week. And um, share this video. Even if it's just to make fun of me, it's still sharing. <laughs> All right. The Saturday is almost over. But I hope you enjoy your Saturday night and your Sunday. And I will see you guys next week. Thank you for watching, as always. Love y'all. Bye.